Welcome to Hello Talk. I am Corey Kerr, and today I want to talk about depth in art. How do you make it feel like something is a deep image, that there's depth in something, when you're doing something on a flat 2D space? Also, um, you're going to watch me ink this. Look, these two pages. Somebody told me one time that it's not, it's this old thing, uh, this is not a pipe, right? It's a picture of a pipe or whatever. Um, that you're not actually representing that thing. What you're doing is it's illusion. You're alluding to that thing. You're creating the illusion of that thing. And so I'm putting ink down on a flat 2D plane, a piece of paper. And yet in that ink, I would like to allude to depth. I'd like to try to go out of my way to show kind of an expansive world or draw you in to the illustration, into the illusion. And so <clears throat> there's a couple different ways to do that. And for the longest time, I've really only heard about perspective. I hear a lot of people talking about perspective and perspective is one of the depth cues, but it is only one of the depth cues. There's a lot of other things that you can do. Perspective is super cool, right? It's really awesome. But actually, in a lot of ways, um, doing perspective can sometimes uh, be very mechanical, and there are other ways to show depth. And so, for example, I wanted to go after some of these things. Um, you can have overlap, right? Overlap is one of the ways that you can show depth. My cat is in my lap. Say hello, cat. Okay. So let's see if we can continue on with my cat in my lap. Uh, anyway, depth, okay? Um, perspective is one way. Uh, if you have train tracks and you see that those two parallel lines converge together, we assume that because they are converging to a point that they are traveling further away from us, that the train tracks don't, aren't coming to a point because we understand how train tracks work. Um, if something, you, you have a row of telephone poles and you don't look at those telephone poles and go, oh, that's strange that they pounded each one of those poles lower and lower and lower into the ground. You go, oh, I assume that those are all the relatively the same height and that they're smaller because they're getting further away from me, right? And so size and perspective um, are, are a way, but not the only way to be able to tell depth. And I wanted to talk about some of the things that you can do in illustration, some of the things that I'm doing in illustration to um, to do depth, because perspective is great, uh, but it's just one of one of the things, right? Um, another thing that you can do is called multiplaning, um, and you, you might you might recognize the name multiplane from the multiplane camera that was invented for um, it, uh, Cinderella way back in the day, or Snow White, or I can't remember one of those Disney movies, and uh, Basically, you had a bunch of different stuff, right? People had known for a long time that there's kind of this idea of parallax. Um, the illusion of parallax is that things that are traveling um, that are further away from you will appear to be traveling slower than things that are traveling the same speed that are right next to you. For example, if you've ever driven in a car pre-DVDs and pre-smartphones, then you might have been very, very bored, like I was on long trips. And I would look outside as we were driving to go visit relatives, because that's what we did, and I would watch these fields of, uh, you know, whatever, corn, wheat, you know, whatnot. Wheat? I don't know if we have wheat out here. Anyway, uh, crops, right? And you have, the, you have the plant, big row, and then in between that you have the furrow where they water and whatever. And, uh, it looked to me as though it was fanning out. It was kind of like that, right? And the stuff that was super close to me was moving really, really, really fast, but the stuff that was super far away from me was moving very slow. And that actually is the idea of depth. In fact, none of that stuff was moving and I was moving across it. Stupid story. At one point in time, I asked my dad, Dad, why is the moon following us? And he said, the moon is not following us, son. And I watched it for a couple minutes and then I looked up again and I said, no, it's following us, dad. Now, the fact of the matter is that we were traveling 
70 miles an hour, and we've gone several miles, but the moon is so far away. It's actually, we are moving in relationship to the moon, but it's so distant that the movement is almost imperceptible, and it seems like it's staying in the same place in the sky and following us because of the distance. That's parallax, right? So a multi-plane camera, what they did was they mimicked the idea of parallax by having a bunch of layers. Let's say that they had five layers. You have one through five, and you move the camera and you move each layer um, one increment at a time, um, but you'd move, five, you'd move one a little bit, it's closer to the camera, two a little bit more, three a little bit more, four a lot, and five a ton. Reverse that is actually what they did. Closer to the camera moves moves more distance in a shorter period of time, and that gives you the idea of parallax. But to do that, you can't have very much perspective in your shots because as those things travel um, to the left or right or up or down from the camera or the viewer's eye, um, if you have vanishing lines, then those vanishing lines would all of a sudden start to look wrong because they're no longer vanishing to the same vanishing point. And so what you do is you draw these flat planes that don't have perspective in them and you layer them on top of each other and those layers offer you the ability to show parallax but not perspective and that is actually another thing um, that you can have. You can also have um, what's called gradient detail um, and that just means that things that are closer to you you can see more detail in those things. And so in this shot, uh, the cliff uh, face that is closer to the viewer um, is way more detailed than the stuff that is further away, the mountains that are further away. You don't see every individual crack and crag. You get general big shapes, right? Also, atmospheric perspective is kind of interesting. As we look through the atmosphere, which is full of stuff, it's, it's sort of invisible, but it's full of stuff, um, that atmosphere actually will color things that are further away from us. And so most of the time it looks blue, but if this if the sky is orange or if the atmosphere is lit in a specific way that there's a specific color, that specific color will tint things that are further away. And so if you want to make something look further away, you can start to kind of add a little bit of blue to it and it'll look like it is further away because it, it seems like we're looking through more atmosphere to, to see that thing. Um, Occlusion is another thing where my right hand is in front of my left hand, and you know my right hand is in front of my left hand because you don't assume that my left hand ceases to exist um, where you can't see it. You assume that something is in front of the other thing um, because it is blocking part of that thing. There's some overlap on that thing. So that's another thing you can do. Um, so there's a lot of these different types of depth cues, and I just wanted to talk about these depth cues because... Um, I get, I get the impression that the only thing that people are aware of sometimes is perspective, and perspective is just one of those things. Relative size, familiar size, um, all of those different things, um, like a defocus blur, right? These are all different terms to describe how our eyes interpret the world around us. We have two eyes, and that gives us kind of this stereoscopic thing, and stereoscopic is just a fancy word to say, like, you move one camera a couple inches over and then you can kind of see some depth because you can see, um, you know, distance and, and, and things like that. Um, elevation, um, shadows are really helpful in a lot of ways because if one thing is in front of the other thing or on top of the other thing, that shadow will depict the form. The shadow will travel along um, whatever surface it is on, which will give you uh, kind of the perspective of that shadow, if it's a super long shadow and it can, it, can, it can go away and things like that. Anyway, all of that is just a really complicated way of saying that uh, I've realized that I work a little bit in perspective, but I actually work a lot in multiplane. And so if you wanna, if you wanna fake perspective, uh, no, if you wanna fake depth, one of the things that you can do is perspective, but another thing that is actually kind of easy to do and will give sometimes your uh, your illustration, whether that be a panel or whether that be uh, you know a page like this or, or a spread, um, is multiplaning, where you say, I'm gonna have foreground elements and midground elements and background elements, and those things will overlap each other. Um, 
giving the concept of depth. And if you add into that detail on the things that are closer to you and less detail on the things that are in the midground and very little detail on the things that are in the, in the far ground, then what you'll have is you're combining multiple concepts, multiple things full of, of depth. Um, I want to talk more about this uh, a little bit later, but anyway, that's kind of how I set this page up. I'm trying to get some flow um, to it. I've I've made some decisions on this where I have uh, the good guy surrounded by light and organic things like barnacles that grow and wood that is kind of an organic soft thing, and he's he's doing things with nature. He's fishing. He's surrounded by uh, symbolism that is kind of holy, um, you know, the sun is on his side. And then she's supposed to be bad, so she's surrounded by hard, cold, sharp things, wet things, right, and, and, and dark things and shadows. And so you'll notice that um, I've kind of tried to do that as well, where she's got the hard stones and the rocks and very little plants, whereas he's got, he's got a lot more growth and plant life on his side of things and a lot more detail on that. Um, but in addition to that, one of the things that I'm trying to do is you can see um, the spread previous to this is kind of a wider shot of, or a longer shot of the same scene. And then we kind of push in, as you turn the page, you push in, you get a little bit closer, a little bit more intimate with these characters. Um, but I still want to give the idea that we are traveling through space, through depths forward, um, uh, you know, traveling over as, as if there's a big camera swooping down and that idea would be um, conveyed by kind of these, I have two main foreground elements that are staggered off of each other. I have two main midground elements that are staggered off of each other. And then I have a series of alternating high contrast background elements where it, it alternates between light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And you can see kind of layers of detail because with the idea that I want to give is that there is just an infinite amount of depth in the world that you're traveling into as you enter my book. Um, I just thought that that might be interesting to describe some of the choices that I'm making. So um, I, do, I, do, I do wonder, what do you guys do for depth? What is, what's your kind of favorite go-to uh, to show depth in the scenes that you're creating? Um, and if you're not a visual creator, what type of depth do you enjoy? What kind of depth cues, um, tips, tricks uh, do you like? Um, you know, uh, different lenses that can compress or pull apart, um, overlapping uh, different scenes. And you can see as you watch, uh, in a future video, I'm going to be doing a, I'm going to be doing a uh, theater versus film um, thing because uh, I've been told that children's books are theater and comic books are film. And I like the idea of that for a number of different reasons, but I'd also like to challenge those notions because I like being obstinate. So anyway, um, as you watch TV, as you watch movies, as you read comic books, as you look at picture books, as you look at illustrations and paintings and uh, the world around you, what are the ways that you create illusions of depth? on flat planes. If you want to check out my stuff, some of which is very flat and some of which is very deep, you can go to coreykerr.com and, uh, and look at that. And, uh, you know, that, that'd be fun. And if you enjoyed this conversation, then you should take a look at some of the other things that I talk about on my channel and like and subscribe and ring that bell and all that jazz and uh, leave a comment and everything. And if you hated this video, hit the thumbs down. Do it. Do it right now. I dare you. Just kidding. You don't have to do it. But, you know, you could if you want. I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs>